Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Barnard. Menstrual pain is very, very common, and sometimes it's really severe. As many as one in 10 women have them bad enough at least one day every month where they're not going to school or going to work. Now, the treatments aren't frankly very good. Ibuprofen, sometimes the pill, well, they leave a lot to be desired. There's a role for food that's very surprising. I'd like to share this with you, and for many women, it has been absolutely life-changing. For me, it started with a phone call. I was sitting at my desk, and the phone rang, and it was a young woman named Robin who said, I just can't get out of bed. She had terrible menstrual cramps. I asked her to describe them, and it was really like she was being tortured. I suggested to her something that I don't think any doctor had ever suggested to a patient before. But before I tell you that, let me describe what menstrual cramps really are. Where does the pain come from? This is the uterus, right there in the middle of the screen. And off to the side are the ovaries, and they're connected by the fallopian tubes. Well, every month, it's normal for that uterine lining to thicken up. That's the pink part here. That's normal because the uterus is getting ready for pregnancy. But sometimes, that uterine lining, called the endometrium, it can thicken up too much. And when it does, it produces maladjusted chemicals called prostaglandins that cause cramps, and they make you hurt. And those prostaglandins will even get in your bloodstream and make you feel really out of sorts. So what can we do? Well, the key to this seems to be a hormone called estrogen. There's actually a whole group of estrogens, and they're in your bloodstream. And now look at this graph. At the beginning of the month, there's very little estrogen in a woman's bloodstream. But after about two weeks, it rises to a peak, and then it falls. That's when the ovary is releasing an egg. And then, over the next week, the amount of estrogen rises again, and that's because the uterus is the most optimistic organ in the body. Every month, it is convinced, this is it, we're going to get pregnant for sure. So that rising amount of estrogen thickens up the inner layer of the uterus, the endometrium. Then, after a week, the disappointed uterus discovers we are not pregnant, and then it lets that whole thickened lining go away in menstrual flow. But the key is, if there's extra estrogen in a woman's blood, that thickening of the lining goes on too much. The lining gets too thick, and that causes heavier flow, more pain, more cramps, more menstrual symptoms in general. Surprisingly enough, all of this can be changed by foods. Researchers a long time ago discovered that if you change your diet, you can change how much estrogen is in your blood. And if you can do that, you can change the cramps. Okay, two rules. Number one, no animal products. Number two, minimize oils. Now, that might all sound surprising, but just stick with me for just a minute. No animal products means avoiding the meats and the dairy products and the eggs. And when I say minimize oils, I mean avoiding uh, fried things, oily salad dressings, and even um, greasy foods like avocados or peanut butter or something like that. We put this diet to a test, working with Georgetown University's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. We brought in a large group of women. They all had moderate to severe menstrual pain, and half of them were asked to start the diet that I just described. A vegan diet, very low in oil. Now, the other half of them started a supplement. It was really a dummy pill, a placebo. It doesn't do anything, but it was used for comparison. Then after two months, everybody switched. The diet group started the supplement. The supplement group started the diet, and it worked. We published the findings in a journal called Obstetrics and Gynecology, and what we found is that the severity of the pain diminished. And not only that, so did PMS symptoms like bloating or water retention or moodiness. So again, what we were testing was no animal products and minimizing oils. Now, why would that work? Well, the first thing is fatty foods increase estrogens. When you eat fatty things, whether it's animal fat like a pork chop or a chicken breast, or even vegetable oils like something fried, onion rings, for example, those oils and fats tend to increase the amount of estrogens. But there's more to it. When you consume plant foods, in fact, when everything you're eating is from a plant, you get a magic ingredient, and that is fiber. Ah, boring word you're saying. Wait, hold on. Fiber is kind of a boring word, but fiber is big stuff. Fiber means plant 
roughage. It's in fruits, it's in vegetables, it's in beans, it's in whole grains. And here's why it matters. Your body actually has a way of getting rid of excess estrogen. That's right. Those estrogens that are thickening up the lining of the uterus and making you miserable, your body has a way of removing the excess and leaving you with the amount that you need. How do you do that? Well, it's the liver. Here's your liver. That's that big red organ at the top here. The liver removes excess estrogens from the bloodstream, sends them through that green tube, that's the bile duct, into your intestinal tract, and there, fiber carries them away. You're, you're literally flushing away excess estrogen. However, what if your lunch was um, chicken breast, salmon, uh, yogurt? They're not from plants. They're from animals, so they don't have any fiber at all. And if there's not enough fiber in your intestinal tract, then when the liver sends the estrogens down into the intestine, there's no fiber to hold on to them. They end up getting reabsorbed back into the bloodstream, and they keep circulating in your body, making you miserable. So the answer, make sure that you have lots of vegetables and fruits and whole grains and beans, and that's why we talk about getting rid of the animal products. Okay, I want to make sure that you're paying attention. Um, spam. Fiber or no fiber? Ah, it's from an animal, not a plant, so fiber is only in plants. Okay, all right, no fiber. This is a trash can, and spam goes away. Um, KFC, fiber or no fiber? Well, no fiber in the chicken. There's a little fiber in the container. <laughs> okay, but I'm sorry, we're going to toss that too. Um, now, there are some things that actually started out as plants but became unrecognizable. Um, you'll see them all up and down the snack aisle, but you know what? Toss those too. Why? Because you want the fiber in your diet. So, what have we talked about? Avoiding high fat foods brings down estrogen. Adding high fiber foods brings down estrogen too. Isn't that cool? One more thing you can do, and this is cheese. Yep, show cheese the door. Yes, I know what you're saying. People love cheese. People actually get kind of hooked on cheese. But cheese actually contains estrogens. Isn't that amazing? Let me, let me share with you the experience of a young woman named Catherine. Catherine was from Louisiana. She was in the Air Force. She was an aerospace engineer. And she actually went into Iraq in 2003 to design and build the bases over there. Well, when you're in a war zone and you're working really hard and you're eating what the government gives you, you don't really gain much weight. But eventually her tour of duty came to an end and she went back to the United States and her friends decided to help her make up for all the foods that she had missed when she was in Iraq. Number one, cheese, mac and cheese, cheese snacks. In fact, for her birthday, a friend actually gave her an entire case of macaroni and cheese dinners. I'm not making this up. 48 mac and cheese boxes, which she ate for 48 days straight. Yes, well, what happened? She gained weight. But something else happened. She started to develop pain, pain in her abdomen, and the pain got especially bad with her cycle. And eventually her doctor did an examination called a laparoscopy. The, you make a little incision right below the belly button, and you put in a, a scope, a little tube, and you can look around and you can see, and what the doctor found was called endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition where the cells that are supposed to be lining the uterus have escaped. They've gone up the fallopian tubes, we believe, and now they're implanting all around the abdomen, and they swell with your monthly cycle, and they cause pain. And that's what she had. So she tried painkillers. She tried hormonal treatments. Nothing worked. And finally, the doctor said, well, we do have a treatment. And it's, it's a hysterectomy, meaning surgically remove your uterus. Well, Catherine was 27. She and her husband were kind of newlyweds. They hadn't raised a family. And so she wasn't 100% keen on this. Uh, but her doctor said, look, this condition, this endometriosis that you have, has probably rendered you infertile anyway, so you've got nothing to lose. Okay. She agreed to the hysterectomy, and they scheduled it for six weeks later. But before she could have it, she went to a nutritionist who looked at her diet and gave her effectively the prescription that I just mentioned to you, which was no animal products, keep the oils really low, and she started to feel better. 
Week by week, she was losing weight, her energy was getting better, and her pain started to get better too. But dutiful person, at six weeks, she showed up to the operating room and they anesthetized her. And when the doctor looked inside, preparing to take out her uterus, well, about an hour later, she woke up. She was in the recovery room and the doctor was shaking her shoulder saying, Catherine, I need you to wake up. I gotta tell you something. I looked inside and your endometriosis is effectively gone. I didn't take out your uterus. I didn't do the hysterectomy. You still got it. Um, the endometriosis is gone and you did have some scarring and you had some adhesions that I had to, fix, to, to, to free up and that was causing that pain that you had left, but you're effectively cured of this. And her mother was in the, in the recovery room with her and her mother said, well, she went vegan. And the doctor said, stop it. Diet doesn't cause endometriosis and a diet change is never gonna make it go away. There's only one explanation for what's happened. This has got to be a miracle. Well, miracle or not, she no longer had endometriosis. And I have to tell you, here she is today. She's lost a lot of weight. She now has three children. Yes, she was not infertile. Uh, she kept her uterus. She still got it. She doesn't have any endometriosis anymore. She has three children. And she's, in fact, joined us to be one of our Food for Life instructors here at the Physicians Committee. She helps other women to take back their health. Okay, so cheese. Cheese and hormones? Well, cheese comes from milk. Milk comes from a cow. And cows are impregnated on dairy farms every single year. And it's kind of a creepy process, but at the end of it, the, the cows are pregnant. Um, and a pregnant cow has about a nine month gestation. During that period of time, they're making estrogens that get into their plasma and then into their milk. And if you take a pail of milk, you can measure the estrogens in it. Then you turn the milk into cheese and the estrogens are concentrated. And of course, people love cheese so they're consuming a lot of estrogen from a cow, and that adds to the estrogen in your body, thickening up the lining of the uterus, uh, causing endometriosis to progress, causing all kinds of hormone haywire that we don't want. What are we gonna do? We're gonna recognize there are some foods we may love that just don't love us back, and it's time to break out of a bad relationship. Okay, the body can heal. Now, you know this is true. If you cut your hand, a Band-Aid doesn't heal you. A Band-Aid just protects you. The skin cells themselves have in their DNA the program to join together again and to heal that cut. It's not perfect. There'll be a little bit of a scar there perhaps, but your body can heal. If you break a bone, the cast doesn't heal you. It just holds the bone still. The bones themselves have the program for healing. And if you have menstrual pain, if you have endometriosis, if you hurt every month, the healing process is not perfect, but it's good. And you should put it to work. So do you want to give this a try? No animal products. Just try this. You don't have to make a decision to do it forever and ever and ever. But say for the next two months, no animal products at all. And do it scrupulously. Give it a good test. And keep oils really low. So that means learning to cook without adding oil to things, choosing the non-fat dressings. And for now, skip the guacamole and the avocados and the peanut butter. Those are the relatively few plant foods that actually are, are pretty oily. But all the rest, the vegetables, the fruits, the grains, beans, they're really, really naturally low in oil. And if you just try this for a couple months, see how you feel. Chances are your pain will improve, might even go away. You'll probably lose a few pounds or even more than a few. Your cholesterol will come down. You'll feel better. You might notice your skin and hair are better too. Okay, fruits, grains, vegetables, legumes, that means beans, that's what you wanna be eating. And don't forget to add a source of vitamin B12. B12 pill that you can get at any drugstore or uh, any health food store. The amount you need is 2.4 micrograms. That's not much. Now, when you start a healthful diet, here's two tips for you. Number one, take about a week to figure out the foods that you'll eat. Uh, take a piece of paper and write down things that happen to be vegan that you'd like. Um, corn flakes with almond milk instead of cow's milk. Um, if you're at the Subway, maybe have a submarine sandwich that's made without the meat, without the cheese. You get the idea. You can try all kinds of foods, see which ones you like. And then after the week is through, you've got a lot of ideas, now put it to work. 
actually do 100% vegan, really low fat, and after a couple months, see how you feel. If you like it, you can stick with it. Let me also mention two tools that you might like. One is we have something called the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart. It's a free app on your iPhone or on your Android. And as its name suggests, 21 days of menus, recipes, cooking videos, you will love it. And the second thing is I have a book called Your Body in Balance, which describes everything that we've talked about today. And it's got lots of recipes that you're going to enjoy. By the way, the recipes were done by Lindsay S. Nixon, who sent them to me saying, I hope you like them. They're delicious. They're quick. They're easy. And this way of eating, she told me, made her pain go away too. Hope it does the same for you. This is Dr. Neil Beinard. Thanks a lot.